Welcome to TalkNorth.com. Thanks to our longtime producer, Brandon Morton. Please download before you listen. If you'd like to advertise with us, you can reach us at TalkNorthPodcast at gmail.com. And please follow us on Twitter at TalkNorthPod. Uh, two promo codes to be aware of. BiteSquad.com. Use the promo code TalkNorth to get your first delivery free. And go to SodaStick.com, the great local apparel company. Use the promo code YouBetcha to get free shipping on any sized order. Before we talk about a couple of left-handed twins pictures on Roy Smalley's chin music, I got to say, uh, somebody put it out there on Twitter. There's there's some dude paraphernalia that is available and artwork that is available <laughs> on the Internet. And, you know, Roy, just you got to tell me when your birthday is so I can buy it for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. I'm walking around the house trying to figure out where I can get away with putting that, <laughs> that stuff up. It uh, works for me, but... Uh, may not work for uh the um the household manager yeah well i just moved into a new place and i have you know i have a bunch of guitars and i have an amp and i have pedals and i have all this stuff and i want it all laid out where i can play easily and uh you know it's not really matching the decor in any of the main rooms (laughs) so guess what all my all my guitar stuff is going in the little office which i'm fine with but you know, I'm, we're actually going through a negotiation here because, I, you know, I'm a typical guitar player. How many more guitars do I want? Just one more, you know. And, <laughs> yeah. and you know, so I'm thinking, but, I, you know, so I have my amp and everything in my office, but I would love to have one cool guitar in the living room just so I can pick up and play it when I'm watching TV or whatever. And now I got to find a guitar that matches the decoration scheme. And that, that well, narrows I can my imagine. I, yeah. I mean, I, I can imagine that. I, I, how could you, you know, be expected to, you know, walk all the way into the office and grab a guitar and then walk all the way into where you want to watch television? I mean, that what a what a hassle. I know it's horrible. I, I am, uh, I'm a disadvantaged person. Uh, I, I yeah. think there should be a program for me someplace. I will say though, it, it's, it's, it, you know, it's one of those psychological things, Roy, I find when there's a guitar near me, I will pick it up and play it for five or 10 minutes here or there. And it's a great way to, to, you know, practice without thinking of your practice, thinking that you're practicing. Whereas if, if you always have to go to the designated guitar spot, you just end up not playing as much. I know it's, it sounds stupid, but it's kind of the way our brains work. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. I suppose I can't, I, I, I can't pass a, uh, a bat without uh, picking it up and uh, swinging it a little bit. So I suppose that's, that's, that's my only, uh, that's the only way I can relate. On to baseball. Uh, this is again, Roy Smalley's chin music, part of the talk North.com podcast network. Of course, Roy is the, uh, star announcer for Fox sports, North former star twins, shortstop Yankee shortstop, uh, embedded in the game has great stories to tell you if you're new to this show. And if you're new to the show, this is going to be a fun year to join in and hear these stories, but let's get to a couple specifics here, Roy. Oh, and first of all, I thank you to our, our sponsors, berrycoffee.com. I got my coffee maker to the point where I'm almost as smart as it is, uh, which I'm really enjoying my, uh, my bull run roast. And thanks to Tony Hogan, your state farm agent and champlain, and also bite squad. Use the promo code talk North for your first delivery be waived. So let's start with the best story of the week. Devin Smeltzer, cancer survivor, major league debut, gets called up, rushes you know to Minneapolis. His first day at the big league ballpark, he pitches six shutout innings against a very good team. Hugs every you know twenty one of his best uh, family members and friends had rushed into Minneapolis. They're all there. He's hugging them and crying outside the clubhouse uh, on, on I think it was Tuesday night. It, it was just. Yeah, I know good things happen in all sports, but for these kind of stories seem to happen mostly in baseball. It was a wonderful uh, night. There's no no question about it. Uh, to be able to witness that, uh, for them to be able to experience that all together. I mean, you know, it just uh, you just know in your heart and and in your mind when you hear the story that that. You know, he battled cancer and all that. You you know how close the family got. You just know in your heart the the, the support he got. That you know that the for 
first of all, beating that thing and then, you know, it, then continuing with his dream to, to pitch in the big leagues. And, you know, for him to get there, uh, what a, what a wonderful, wonderful culmination of the, the fight and the support and um, the beating it and getting past it. And, and on top of that, then to pitch as, as good as six innings of work as anybody can pitch. I mean, it was, it was a fantastic uh, performance and, and I was, I was happy and proud to have been at the ballpark to watch it. Yeah, it was great. And the, you know, listen, the, the personal backstory made it very special, but just the baseball aspect of it, he came, this well, wasn't just, it, yeah, that, that was special. That was, what he did was special. Yeah. And, and not ju- and, and, you know, it wasn't a September call up either, uh, you know, and a team running up the string. This is a first place team. The games are important. You're playing against a very uh, high quality opponent. Uh, you're, there was pressure too. There's pressure to perform uh, his, you know, and he's trying to prove that he is a big league pitcher. He, his minor league career has been okay, but not outstanding until this year. And I asked him what has changed. And he mentioned some mechanical and physical things he'd done differently. But he said mainly, he had always had trouble getting through first innings because he got so excited that it would take him an inning to calm down. He said he started meditating, and that helped him early in game just go out there with more, you know, more poise. So let's let's dive into the baseball aspect of this. Nobody gets through the season with five starters. Everybody's going to have need eight. Sometimes you're going to need fifteen to get through the season if you have bad luck, like the Twins have had in some seasons. Did you see in combination of command and stuff? that Smeltzer has enough to survive in the big leagues once people start seeing him more often? I'm going to say I have to think so because of the way he got really good hitters out um, two and in some cases three times. Um, you know, he throws 89 miles an hour, maybe 90 every once in a while. And um, those guys uh, have – a hard time sustaining success because it, you just have to be so perfect with, with location and with pitch selection. One of the things that happened in his six innings of shutout work where, wherein he threw 69 pitches in six innings uh, and 53 strikes. I mean, it, we have, we never see that. I mean, 69 pitches we're used to, seeing 69 pitches thrown in three innings, uh, the two innings. And, uh, in some cases, and, you know, all the starters that, that for the twins this year have been so much better at that, but this was, this was incredible. And it wasn't against uh, a team that can't hit. I mean, we know the pedigree of all the players on the Brewers and, um, it, it, it just was, it, it was a, it, an almost an unheard of, um, uh, occurrence to have him, you know, go through the lineup, the, that lineup, the way he did with 89 or 90 miles an hour. But I will say that he, uh, he had command of that pitch. He, he didn't throw an awful lot of those in the middle of the strike zone. They were on the perimeters. He dropped in a big, big sweeping, uh, curve ball, uh, just enough to put that pitch in people in the hitter's mind. And he has a really good change up the motion of his body and arm, motion on his changeup is exactly the body and arm motion that is on his fastball. And when you have that, I mean, the, a good fastball changeup combination in, I think is, is the best combination for a pitcher to have in the big leagues. And he had that um, the other night and uh, just made really good hitters like Lorenzo Cain and Christian Yelich uh, just baffled. I mean, I was baffled sitting in and watching the game and watching Yelich swing and a change up in the dirt and take a fastball just off the middle and have a fastball thrown by him, have a fastball thrown by Lorenzo Cain, have a fastball thrown by, um, Ryan Braun. I mean, I, I looked at it as a, <clears throat> excuse me, he's got, he's got command of his pitches and he's like a, he's, he has the, the, the courage of a bandit to, you know, throw that 89 or 90 miles an hour for strikes. And it seemed like they, they, the Brewers hitters were always either looking or concerned about some other speed. And the 89 or 90 looked like eight miles an hour faster than that. Right. And, and a reminder, 
Uh, you know, I think the easy comparison for paranoid Twins fans, which seems to be a large portion of the fan base these days, is, okay, Andrew Albers did this. He came up, he pitched great his first couple times out, and then he ends up signing, and I think it was career or something, because his stuff just wasn't going to play at this level. I, I, this looked different to me, even, you know, not breaking it down to the infinite degree that you are. looked different to me. Uh, the 89 got past people. You know, hey, we saw Eddie Guardado become an all-star closer with a 90-mile-an-hour fastball because he hit it. And it had a little bit of late movement, and he was had the guts to throw it for strikes all the time. You know, this remind I just loved the competitiveness and the way he went right at people with this stuff. Yeah, I did too. It was the best thing he did. It was just like you know, it, it, here's my stuff. Here's how I'm going to pitch. Let's see if it plays. Uh, and it played. You know, I mean, he. It, it, but you know, when you pitch sca- uh, when you pitch afraid of your stuff, you got no chance. You have to and. You know, trust your stuff is a phrase that's really uh, overused in uh, in baseball. Uh, but uh, trite happens because it's true, right? I mean, and and you you have what you have. Your stuff is your stuff, and it doesn't get any better uh, if you if you're pitching two and zero oh and three and one because you're afraid to uh, afraid afraid to, it might not be good enough. Believe me, if it's not good enough on the first ball pitch. It's really not going to be good enough two and zero and three and one, and and he I think he understands that and he and he, you know he throws it in there and and where he can be successful I think is that he he seems to have a feel for what is the appropriate pitch uh, to throw right now uh, not just location but uh, speed and trajectory right so. Um, it, it, he just had, you would think that after six innings, a team that could, can hit like the Brewers can hit. Okay. He gets through the lineup one time. And now everybody says this, you know, talking to each other on the bench and this is what he's doing and we know what he's doing and let's go get him. And they, they weren't able to do that. He just kept throwing the right pitch in the right location time after time. And, and so that, you know, gives me an idea that he, you know, that might, play long term in the league it's it it has you know it has to always be that way with you know when you're throw when you have 89 or 90 and you know you but uh it 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 looks like he has the the delivery which is a little deceptive and the um and the feel for pitching that, that 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 might make it work Let's talk about Martin Perez next. Uh, congratulations to Devin Smeltzer on the debut. do want to thank Barry Coffey, barrycoffee.com. Uh, I have finally got to the point where I'm almost as smart as the coffee maker that I got from uh, Steve Brem. And we're almost on equal footing, and now I can make it work. And the coffee is fantastic. I'm drinking the Bull Run blend uh, from the, you know that I also bought through barrycoffee.com, and it's uh, it's fantastic. And Roy, you know, I think we were talking the other week. It's like the, the morning cup of coffee shouldn't be that big a deal, but it is. And <laughs> it, it really is. It's such, I don't want to overstate it. It's, it's just a daily pleasure to walk down and drink bull run coffee every morning to start my day. I hate to admit this. I, I, I really do. I, I really do. But I, I'm, I'm deprived uh, because, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't, not able to drink bull run coffee at my, at my desk, at my offices, which is, I get up in the morning and I um, get some exercising done and I, and I get down to, I drink a uh, protein shake on my way to work, uh, to my office. And then I sit down and as I'm uh, getting into the day, I have a cup of coffee or two and my, my machine that makes bull run coffee as is yours is sitting on the counter in my kitchen. And, and so I have bull run coffee on Saturdays and Sundays and, and I miss it so much during the weekend because nothing compares. And I have to tell you, it's, it's really, um, affected my weekends because I, I just don't get around as quickly in the, on Saturdays and Sunday mornings now to get stuff done because I just sit there and drink that coffee for a while because I missed it Monday through Friday. So it, you're right. It's a, you know, obviously for coffee drinkers, the, the morning coffee is important, 
but I can tell you my Saturday and Sunday mornings coffee is it's like, don't bother me. You can't take this away from me. I haven't had it for, I haven't had it for five days. And you know, I moved into a new place. It's 